Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. Thank you for the opportunity to come here and worship you. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit, and we pray that you would fill us with your Spirit so we might understand the words that you've written for our understanding. Help us to not only understand them, but then to apply them. And so, Father, be with us and guide us. As through Christ we pray. Amen. Uh, we've had some interesting events this past week politically, and I'm not going to go into those things. I just wanted to let you know that this lesson wasn't written with that in mind. It was something I'd prepared uh, several weeks ago, but it probably is somewhat fitting given current circumstances, and that's being a person of integrity. And so it's taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 25 through 28. You can open your Bibles to that Old Testament book, or you can read it on the overhead, whichever you prefer. But I hope that this Sunday morning is not the only time you open your Bible, that you do it throughout the week. Let God kind of speak to you through His Word, whether it's in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. But here's what the book of Daniel says, beginning in chapter 6, verse 25. And I will also say this. When we get to Darius, some people pronounce it Darius, some people pronounce it Darius, so you say tomato, I say tomato, I'm going to use Darius, but you can call him whatever you're familiar and comfortable with, but then King Darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people he performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Now, I will just tell you that the public arena is probably not the easiest place to start from scratch when it comes to becoming a person of integrity. One reason is that in our culture, just like in Daniel's, it's not always true that when we do wrong, we will be punished, and when we do right, we'll be rewarded. At times, the reverse actually seems to be true, challenging our commitment to do what we know is the right thing to do. In fact, in Daniel's case, doing the right thing was not rewarded, but was instead punished. However, just when the situation looked absolutely hopeless for Daniel, Daniel was delivered from death. Because it says in Daniel chapter 6, verse 23, because Daniel believed in his God. What he was in private, who was a committed follower of God, was ultimately revealed in public. Now let me just give you a very brief historic kind of recapture of where we're at. So the Israelites had been taken into Babylonian captivity and taken out of their homeland and transferred to the place where they are now at, including Daniel. And Daniel was a young man, along with many other young men, and it seems that during that period of time, the king had preferred men and women of intelligence 
to help perhaps serve in his kingdom. And so Daniel had, by virtue of the gift that had been provided to him by God, of his intelligence and his ability, abilities to administrate and understand laws, he had risen through Darius's kingdom to a place of some prominence. But Daniel never forgot where he came from, who he was, and who deserved his worship and attention. And that was always God. So no matter where Daniel was, whether it was in his former homeland or now in Babylonian captivity, Daniel remained a follower of God. And as we then find out in Daniel chapter 6, this actually had been quite a night for Daniel. As Daniel found himself now in the company of a bunch of very hungry lions. He had been thrown into their den, but apparently, we don't know for sure, but it, it appears that he slept pretty much like a baby in their midst. Because duped by Daniel's enemies to sign a decree that mandated what appeared to be Daniel's death sentence, Darius had apparently stayed up all night pacing back and forth in confusion and in concern about how the law had now applied to one of his gifted advisors. At dawn, however, Darius rushed to the lion's den, cupped his hands around his mouth and shouted, Daniel, servant of God, was your God able to to save you and rescue you from the lions? The king was amazed and then relieved to hear Daniel's response. Daniel stirred, I mean, we don't know, probably rubbed the sleep out of his eyes, stretched his arms, maybe let out a yawn, maybe wiped the lion fur from his head where he'd probably use them as a pillow and answered, Long live the king! My God sent the angel to shut the lion's mouths so they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. And you can read that in Daniel chapter 6, verses 21 and 22. The king's question of Daniel is the question that our culture is asking us today. Is the God whom you and I serve able to deliver us? That's the question. Daniel had kept his faith in God and a mark of true integrity that was rooted very deeply in Daniel's private world. And it always follows that integrity is ultimately revealed in the public world for God's glory and for our good. And I think there's a lesson here for us. Daniel was in the lion's den not because he had done wrong, Daniel was in the lion's den because he had done what was right. And we all know people who, like Daniel, have paid a great price actually doing what was right. But when all is said and finally done, God, who will never abdicate his throne, is going to right all wrong. What we see in Daniel's experience is that in the final analysis, our integrity will be revealed in the public square as a testimony to our faith and to our God. Upon being delivered from the lion's den, Daniel's integrity was now on public display. But Daniel didn't take credit for his deliverance because he was quick to say in Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me. 
You see, church, people of integrity do not take personal credit for something they did not do. In response, Darius made this startling decree to the people of every race, every nation, and every language throughout the then known world. And you can read it with me. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. You know, even a lost culture will stop and take notice of a person of integrity when their integrity is revealed in public. And from Daniel's experience in the midst of the lions, we learn too that our integrity must be rooted in our private life. And if Daniel is an example, prayer should be all of our number one priority. In Daniel's own value system, his private time alone with God was the highest priority. And we learn, too, that integrity is reflected in our personal lives. You see, how we respond and how we react in our personal relationships with those who know us best is directly correlative to the strength of our own private life with the Lord and can always be reinforced in our professional or our working lives. I mean, integrity is crucial in today's marketplace. Unfortunately, professing believers are not always influencing our culture because their Monday through Friday lives aren't a whole lot different from the lives of those with whom they work. The best place to engage and the best place to transform our culture is not the place where we spend our Sunday mornings, but where we spend most of our days, Monday through Friday. Daniel's story also reminds us that integrity will ultimately be revealed in our public life. Everything King Darius knew about God, he learned by observing Daniel's public life of integrity. And I want you to think about that. Because we are being watched. And our world still wants to know from each of us, is your God able to deliver you? Because the question behind the question is, if so, is your God able to deliver me? They will never know the answer to that question unless we're people of integrity. And our culture brings new challenges to our Christian faith with each and every passing day. New assaults on religious liberties cherished for centuries are happening with increasing regularity. And Daniel would be able to relate to that. Like many of us, Daniel grew up in a culture built on biblical truth and centered on traditional family values. And then he found himself living in a culture that was hostile to everything he had ever known. His value system, his truth claims, his own moral compass were challenged repeatedly at every turn of his new life in this different culture which he did not choose. His world was suddenly a world of pluralistic thought. 
But Daniel had a different spirit about him. He was a man of integrity who not only engaged his culture head on, but was used by God to transform the culture in which he lived. It seems that with every new court decision, rules and regulations, our 21st century culture tests our Christian values and truth claims always now challenging them as alternative facts. And those of us who once knew a Judeo-Christian culture have suddenly found ourselves living in a culture as hostile to what we believe as Babylon was hostile to Daniel's closely held beliefs. Solomon wrote, Thousands of years ago, there is nothing new under the sun. If we think that what we're going through today is new, it is not. The same problems, the same issues, the same challenges that we have today are no different than the challenges that, that Daniel was facing then. Our world is evolving into one massive pluralism with an encroaching paganism attached to various belief systems. Our nation, our culture, needs men and women of integrity whose integrity is rooted in their private lives, reflected in their personal lives, and reinforced in their professional lives, and then ultimately revealed in public. May all of us rise up and be counted. All of you. Daniel left us his template for engaging and influencing his culture. It was at its very core founded upon his personal integrity. And if you do not believe me, then I would encourage you to go home, open your Bibles, and read the book of Daniel. And find for yourself how often, how frequent, and how lengthy Daniel's relationship with God was through prayer. It was the bedrock of his life. And if we're going to find our way through a culture that has lost its own way, We've got to do the same. So church, be a person of integrity. Let it have its genesis in your prayer. And then like a mirror, let it reflect your personal life that once revealed will answer the question of a culture who desperately, desperately wants to know if your God is able. In 1975, do you remember this guy? Carl Madden, right? Pardon? Malden, Carl Malden, thank you. I, I kind of remembered him. <clears throat> in 1975, though, the renowned advertising agency Ogilvy and Mather, they conceived a slogan that was introduced to the public as part of a campaign to promote American Express Traveler's Checks. And the catchy phrase that was developed in 1975 was, don't leave home without it. It's been invaluable in shaping American Express's image and their brand. And I guess that you could also say the same thing about your integrity. Don't leave home without it. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. Solomon said in Proverbs 28, verse 6, pretty pithy, pretty applicable. Because sometimes I know we look at public events and wonder what 
could we possibly do to be a force for change in the society and the culture in which we live? And I'm not just talking politics. I'm just talking about life in general. How can I influence other people who live in a culture that is so diametrically opposed to what I believe? The answer is, live your life with integrity. Because if you do, people will pay attention. If you do, people will ask you questions. If you do, like Daniel did, a government might require all of its citizens to worship God as the only true and living God. That would be an amazing result of a life of personal integrity. But it happened. The Babylonian Empire that had then morphed into King Darius owned essentially what was known then of the entire world. And what Darius did is he directed every person of every race, of every language, of every color to acknowledge that God was the only God. That was saying a lot, coming from a king who worshipped a number of different gods. And it all happened because he observed a person that he never hired, but was basically provided out of exile from a country that he had overcome. And the young man's name was Daniel. And if you don't think that your life can't have importance and meaning, then you need to read about Daniel. He was a person who did not want to have any particular fame or celebrity, just lived a life of integrity and found himself in a place where he could influence the world for good. And all of you can do the same. In small ways, in large ways, in ways that God sees, he will use you like he did Jonah, like Justin referred to, to go out and preach to a community and to a culture and to a world that chooses not to believe in God. If you don't think you can be an influence for change in this society, you're wrong. You can. And it begins with being a person of integrity. So this week, be that person. Be who you are. Remind yourself of where you've come from and people will take notice. And as they take notice, you will have the chance to do good. So if you have any prayer requests, you can hand them up. We're going to sing Trust and Obey. Um, Christine, you might need to turn my volume down a little bit because I'm going to lead singing with the headset. Otherwise, be blasting everybody out. But if you have any prayer requests, you can hand them up uh, as we sing this song. And then at the close of the song, we'll talk about that and we'll pray about that and then we'll be dismissed. Let's stand and let's sing, please.